Good morning. Welcome to the Franklin County Board of County Commissioners meeting for Wednesday, September 5th. Roll call, please. Commissioner Howard? Present. Commissioner Weimar? Present. Chair Renaud? Present. Vice Chair Oglesby? Present. Commissioner Dunn? Present. If you would, please stand for our Pledge of Allegiance, followed by our invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father God, <clears throat> we thank you for this day. We thank you for the wonderful rain we needed so badly. And Lord God, you know what we need, have need of even before we ask. And I pray God your blessings upon this meeting, Lord. Just bless each one of our county workers, Lord God. And Lord, we just thank you for your many blessings. You're such a good God. And Lord, we give you the praise and the glory. Amen. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, Derek, anything under organizational correspondence? Anybody sign public comment? No. Okay. Okay, on our consent agenda today, we'll be considered approved the county commission minutes for June the 14th, which has been uh, the canvassing of the votes, um, the August 14th study session, the August 20th study session, the August 28th special meeting uh, with Ransom Memorial Hospital, and the regular meeting on August 29th. Also, uh, we have claim vouchers to approve in the amount of $909,796.66. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Oglesby? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Renaud? Yes. Okay, our first item of business is to uh, consider for approval of the Adamson Brothers heating and cooling bid to replace the heating and air conditioning units at the uh, Old Depot. Morning. Morning, Brandon. Um, yeah, so uh, I stopped by the uh, Old Depot Museum yesterday and uh, checked out their units um, just to kind of get an overview of them, just to confirm that they really are in bad shape and they all four do need replaced, and they do. Um, Adamson Brothers has been doing the service on those for the last few years and kind of uh, helping those kind of hobble along and they've been doing a good job with that so um, they were also the lowest bid out of the um, other three companies that put in a bid for the project Well, when we discussed this earlier, the, bit, the estimate was like in the 30,000 range, if I remember right, or I don't know what we budgeted for it, but I know that it was in there. Okay. Any other questions for Brandon? If not, I'd look for a motion. I'll make the motion. We approve Addison Brothers' bid in the amount of 22200 to replace the four air conditioning units on the Old Depot Museum. Second. Commissioner Weimar? Yes. Commissioner Oglesby? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Chair Renaud? Yes. Okay, thank you, Brandon. What, uh, what about the parking lot out here? What, um, what can you tell us about that? Um, for our yeah. options, what are plans? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pond out there right now, isn't it? <laughs> um, so, I got um, a rough estimate from Kerry Plumbing. We need to open up the drain line, um, and there is a four-inch drain line right now, and we need something more like a 10 or a 12-inch drain line um, in the parking lot. It's just too much water running through there. That's why it's backing up like that. Um, that was about a, a $20,000, $22,000 repair to get that done. Um, so we haven't really made any moves on that yet, so just trying to see if there's anything else that we can do just to try to <laughs> improve flow a little bit for now so several years ago somebody did a, uh, a site plan of the parking lot 
with elevations and uh, put together a plan for basically a concrete trough and then uh, asphalted back in the uh, around it to, to make okay. it flow so not putting it underground but going above ground that document somewhere floating around okay yeah I'll see if I can find that somewhere that'd be good to have okay Okay, uh, second item would be considered for approval the uh, fiscal year 2018 workstation rotation. Dustin. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. This is a regular annual rotation, so there's nothing too new here other than the numbers. We're seeing a $7.51 increase per workstation cost this year, brings our total system cost to $1,007.92 each. Uh, many of these workstations are going to several areas and some of them are being billed back to those departments such as systems and juvenile dispatch district court they're all on this order so as you can see in that cover letter there's only a little under 17,000 that is going to hit the IT fund the remaining of the 29,000 29,975.36 on this request is going to be billed back to the individual departments will be reflected on our in our uh, reimbursement line. This is still in an effort. This year was a kind of a lighter year on some of the workstations. So some that we postponed last year are included in this. Some that are due next year are being brought up. We're try still trying to balance that out to get a more even number year over year. I think that's a pretty good bid if you only had a $7.51 increase. We fight with them for quite a while. Um, I was a little behind getting started on the process this year and then um, went back and forth with them for about three months on getting these prices down where they needed to be. That's very much appreciative. I think the, the longer I've worked with Dustin, the more I've grown to appreciate uh, he is very conservative fiscally. Yeah. He does a nice job of saving the county <clears throat> Okay, any other questions on this bid? Hmm. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the purchase of equipment from Dell Inc. for the fiscal year 2018 workstation rotation in the amount of $29,975.36. I second that motion. Commissioner Oglesby? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Chair Renaud? Yes. Thanks, Dustin. Okay, next item is considered for approval entering into indemnity agreement with Security First Title regarding the property at 132 West Central Street in Richmond. Derek? sell the property and upon trying to get title insurance for said property they discovered that they didn't have good title that the previous owner of the property was never properly served during the tax sale and so a key component to any lawsuit is you have to obtain good service on the defendant and here um, and I've got the summons I it, they did not get service it appears that the previous owner of the property um, had moved out and, and left the state many years earlier. So I did some background into this. Uh, sure enough, the owners of the property moved down to Arizona, I mean, eight or 10 years ago. They don't own, and I talked with Sue McKay, they don't own any other properties in Franklin County or in Kansas at all. It would appear that they just packed up and left. So what this indemnity Board effectively saying we will indemnify 
security first title against any claims that may be made by the previous owner and their names are the Pearsons. And so by doing that, if we give them this indemnity, then they will provide title insurance to um, the current owner and that would allow them to sell their Is this like a vacant lot or what is this? It's right off of Main Street, isn't it? Right. Yeah, we, we own the house and the lot uh, and the land and then it's, it's, it's a small piece of land next to the house. And so we have a lot of I remember about something about this when we went through this and the city of Richmond was dealing with it at their city council meeting a while back too. Uh, so what's our potential exposure? Well, the exposure would be that the Pearson family reappears and claims, no, we were actually the owner of this. We were never served. And, and technically, I mean, they, they would have a legal claim, but if you weigh your options, so our alternative, I mean, the county screwed this up. We did not get proper service. And, and I've got documentation here showing that. So we could go try to attempt to locate these folks in Arizona, effectively recreate and redo the entire tax sale, but there's a substantial cost associated with that versus, you know, what are the odds that these folks come back? And that's why we're looking, do they still own property in the area? Where did they leave to? It's not like they moved down to Garnett where you believe they're in Arizona. I think the actual risk of them Coming back to Franklin County is very low, and so I don't, I don't see a lot of exposure here, practically speaking. Roughly the value of the property? I don't know the rough value of the property. You have a potential sale price. I don't know that. Yeah, but the sale That's for everything. It seems like to me their exposure is not a great amount of money. But. Yeah, no, the, the monetary amount would be very, very low. In fact, I, I bet it would be lower than the cost of us trying to get these folks properly served. Or them properly trying to get us back to court. Yeah, that's exactly right. If we were dealing with a home, it would maybe be a little bit different situation given the inherent value of a, of a home. Did this property have something to do with a railroad right away years ago or something? Rails to trails. Right. Best valuation is four hundred and forty nine dollars. I'll make a motion to enter into an indemnity agreement with Security First Title LLC regarding the property located at one thirty two West Central Street, Richmond. Second. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Waymire? Yes. Commissioner Oglesby? Yes. Chair Renaud? Yes. Okay, that takes us to staff reports. Derek?
Brandon, anything else? Dustin? Allison? Nope, nope. Bennett? Okay, the commissioner comments and board reports. Let's start that one. I haven't been to anything since the last meeting. Lower box? Nothing. Rick, you got anything? No. Uh, last uh, Wednesday night, I attended the Wellsville City Council meeting, uh, trying to get uh, approval for a beer garden on Wellsville days coming up in September. Uh, talked a little bit about uh, they had a storm siren pole break and fall on a truck, liability for that. They're still working on their SRO grant. Uh, the school has approved that, and they're just waiting for the grant so they can put uh, that in place. Um, other than that, the issues in eggs, attended that meeting. Uh, nothing else then. It looks like we might go to uh, an executive session. I would, I would say that there is, uh, as, as reported in the Ottawa Herald as well, that the 24th at 8 o'clock, there'll be a groundbreaking for the new Arby's on South Princeton that uh, has been a lot of discussion about. And this Friday at the Schindel Conference Center at Ottawa University, there is a chamber coffee that will welcome the new president, uh, Dr. Reggie Swaniki. And if you haven't met him, I would encourage you to, to come and, and get a chance to meet him. He's gonna be a great asset to our community. So, okay. Derek, you're looking for uh, an executive session for 20 minutes? Make a motion that we enter into executive session to discuss an individual employee's performance pursuant to the non-elected personnel matter exception, KSA 75-4319B1 for 20 minutes, including the county administrator and the board of county commissioners. Second. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Waymire? Yes. Commissioner Oglesby? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Vanot? Yes. Okay. Going at 848. Time will come. It is no 908. We're out of executive session. Uh, no action has been taken. Uh, there's nothing else from commissioners or Derek. I would look for a motion for adjournment. Make the motion. Second. All right, most second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.